This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and today we're going to look at a kind of fundamental aspect of creating a full program around your game, which is scene management. Now, Unity has a few approaches you can take to scene management. The first you can do is you can build everything you need into one scene, all your menus, your game itself, any other effects or transitions, and just kind of switch things on and off as you go. Another option is you can have each different part of your program in a discrete scene and move from one to the other as you need them. Now, more recently, in around Unity 5, um, they introduced this idea of being able to load scenes concurrently so that scenes almost become more like modules that you can use and kind of load without actually changing from one scene to another. You're kind of adding these parts in and out. Um, now, for this particular video series, we're actually going to use the second approach, the more traditional kind of having each thing in a different scene and moving from scene to scene, because particularly because it works better for the type of game that we're creating here, where it's really a discrete menu section and then the discrete game scene that we're going into. Now, as I said, we can do a menu screen, a menu scene, a game scene. We can also add in things like a game over scene or adding in your high scores, do a separate scene for that if we wanted to. Um, but really, the challenge we have is that because we have this self-contained game unit, it doesn't know when its scene has specifically been loaded so that it knows when to start you know, loading its level data and doing things like that. It needs to be told to do so through the on-level start event that we call. Currently, we're calling this through that outsider script that's really just kind of a demo. Typically, how you'll solve this is by creating some sort of a game manager class that will exist throughout all your scenes and can call on these sorts of things. If you've seen my video on game managers, you don't that I don't like the term because it's not well-defined enough and it becomes filled with every kind of method you can think of, and it just kind of makes things really fuzzy. Instead, what I'm going to recommend in this video is that we take our outsider script and kind of promote it into a play session manager, which sounds kind of like just a semantic difference between that and game manager, but it's really actually kind of important because what the difference is, is that this is not in charge of the program as a whole, and it's not even in charge of the game that's kind of that self-contained game. What this really is, though, is when you start up the program any given time, that's the beginning of your play session, and this class, this um, instance of this class, is going to really follow you from place to place. It's almost like if you go to Disney, you get a wristband, that's kind of, it's your key to your hotel room, it, you use it to pay for food, you use it to get into the parks. Same idea, it's going to kind of follow you from place to place and kind of alert things where you are, but it's not going to be, that's, that's much more specifically what its role is, rather than a game manager that can do a bunch of different things. So, with that, let's jump into Unity and get started creating this Play Session Manager. So here in Unity, you may notice that I've put all of our game-related scripts into a game folder. So we're kind of representing in our Assets folder that these are now contained. Um, much like the game itself is self-contained, they are kind of here and don't directly intermingle with any other scripts we're going to create. I am going to create a new script outside of this game folder called Play Session Manager. And we can open that up here in uh, Mono Develop. And we're going to keep um, the Mono Behavior. I'm actually going to delete these two methods. We're not going to need them right now. I'm also going to create a public static Play Session Manager instance. I'm just calling it INS for short. And that is how we're going to access um, the PlayStation Manager, or Play Session Manager rather, um, wherever it is. And this is now going to, we're going to make this a singleton that can travel from scene to scene with us. We'll do that by in void awake, we're going to check if INS equals null, meaning that nothing has been declared as that static instance then we will make this the instance and we will say don't destroy on load for this game for the game object that this PlayStation PlayStation manager will be um, attached to now there is a possibility that say we're going from one scene to another and there's a play session manager like kind of waiting for us in that scene but it's not the static instance when it starts up, it's going to look and say, oh, if the instance isn't null, 
and it's not me, meaning something else has already taken that place, I can just destroy it myself. So we'll say if the instance does not equal this, then destroy the game object that I'm attached to. So that's all just making this into a singleton that can, like we say, exist from scene to scene to scene. So what we can do now is we can take this outsider object that we have, we can delete that, because we're now going to replace it. Create an empty object here. We're going to call this play session manager. And we're going to add the play session manager component to it. So now this is a an object that will be able to kind of set itself as the static instance and move from scene to scene once we have multiple scenes to move around to. So we can save that quickly. And I'm actually also going to drag this into our prefabs folder so that this becomes a prefab and when we do create say a main menu scene we can just drag that in there and we'll have one in each scene so that no matter where we start testing our game from we can always have that play session manager ready to help us out. Now the second part of this like I said is that we need something to call this on level start event instead of that out outsider script that we were relying on previously. So what we'll do here is now we need a new aspect of Unity called Scene Management. So we're going to go up to our libraries here where we have our collections, collections.generic and Unity Engine. And we're going to add using Unity Engine dot Scene Management. And this gives us access to a number of different things relating to, as it's stated, managing the different scenes in Unity. So we're going to do in here is we're now going to say scene manager dot on or is it on scene loaded or just scene loaded scene loaded is an event and we're going to add a new method that we currently don't have but I'm going to create in just one second here and I'm going to call this on scene load now it's going to be red because it, we don't have it yet down here we can create this method now. We're going to call void on scene load and it's worth noting that this scene loaded event, if we look at it here, it has this, um, can't move that, but if you look down there it says t0 arg0 t1 arg1. Um, basically because it's a unity action it doesn't specify what those are. Those are actually a scene and a load scene mode and so what we have to do is make sure that in here, in our on scene load, we need to say scene and give it some sort of name. I'll just call it S for short. And load scene mode as LSM for short. Otherwise, this will complain that the event um, arguments and the um, delegate that we're putting into it don't actually, or the uh, method rather that we're assigning to it don't actually match. So basically what this is now going to say is for us is once we load any scene then we can call some sort of uh, code that we want in here. And what we can do here is we can check and we can say if the current scene's name is equal to, and now we want to look and see what did we call this scene that we have our game set up in. We called it level. So if we're in, basically we're saying if we're in the level then we know that we have a level manager and we know we have a level manager event um, called on level start but we can't actually call the event itself remember from outside of the class so we have to call this public static void start level which will then call the event for us so all we have to do is call level manager dot start level if we're in the level so we can say level manager dot start level and that will call that for us. So what we can do now is we can go back to Unity here. Uh, let's see here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Scene management scene name cannot be used in this context because the set accessor. Oh, I was didn't use the double it equals there. There now we know if the scene name is level, we're not setting it to level. Uh, did I save it? No, I didn't. There we go. Any other errors? Nope. Okay, so now we should be able to hit play, and this will, this now, this play session manager, once the scene loads, and the scene does indeed load when you first start the game too, it doesn't have to be a transition from one to another, we should tell our level to start um, setting itself up.
So let's hit play and see what happens here. And sure enough, there we are. Now we can walk around and move in our scene and continue playing it as normal. So obviously this isn't really a huge difference from the outsider script because we're not really transitioning from scene to scene. But what we've set up here is that foundation that um, we're you know, able now to say that this will, this play session manager will stay from scene to scene. And every time a scene loads, we can check, you know, is this a certain scene? Do something special for that scene if it is in fact, um, like, like right now, if it is the level, start the level. Maybe if we're in the menu, do something for that, start playing music or something like that. It gives us that ability to kind of control what happens as the player moves through the program and we're able to kind of curate that experience for them. So in our next video, we're actually going to dive into starting that main menu and seeing how this actually works in practice with multiple scenes. But until then, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.